That text there was actually from a very, very famous book called On the Witness Stand by this guy, Hugo Munsterberg. I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong. I've heard like 10 different pronunciations of his name, so I'm just going with the one that I uh, kind of naturally rolls off my tongue. But this book was published in 1908. And Munsterberg is credited as really being the father of forensic psychology. So he wrote this book um, and included several chapters. If I go through these, it's illusions, the memory of the witness, the detection of crime, the traces of emotion, untrue confessions, suggestions in the court, hypnotism and crime, and the prevention of crime. All of these chapters of his book on the witness stand are relevant today. And really they kind of mirror what we're going to go over in a forensic psychology class a hundred years later, a hundred plus years later. The only problem with this guy was that he was a real jerk. And that sounds like a joke, but this is a joke. That just will help you remember his name. When Munsterberg went into the courtroom, he was, uh, I guess, uh, less than polite. Um, he was kind of a, a pompous uh, a-hole. Um, and people didn't like him. He was very forceful. And uh, well, he had trouble making friends. And really, Although he's the father of forensic psychology, uh, he almost uh, screwed up the field for the rest of us. And after his work and the work of several other psychologists at that time, forensic psychology kind of faded away into obscurity until the 1970s. And at that time, there was a resurrection in the field with researchers like Elizabeth Loftus, who I'd like to note is coming to NOVA next year as part of our Distinguished Speaker Series. So we're going to talk a lot about her during the semester. And uh, um, so we see a rebirth of forensic psychology in the 1970s.